get ready. So hello and welcome to uh, another episode of Adventure Bike Pilot. Uh, in this episode, uh, I'm going to continue on in the Wild Atlantic Way um, series. Uh, the first uh, episode in this series was an, an overview of the entire Wild Atlantic Way route, uh, when to go and what to do and, and you know the things to expect to see, etc. So this is the first part of the actual routes themselves, uh, getting into uh, the, a, a deeper dive of it. And we're going to start with uh, basically what I'm calling the, the Southern Peninsulas Plus. Um, so that, that encompasses, what does, what does that include? So let's, let's go through what that includes. So if you remember from the overview, if you've watched it, I broke the Wild Atlantic Way into three sections. Um, if you're traveling from north to south or, or vice versa. Uh, so in this one in particular, in, in this video, what we're going to focus on is is the bottom section here highlighted in red here so that's going to include you know west cork uh, from kinsale onwards uh, the sheep's head peninsula the bear peninsula the ring of kerry itself the dingle peninsula uh, a small part of limerick uh, as you cross over into clare and up along the burham in ireland um so so we're going to go through it in, in a lot of detail so what I would suggest is it's uh, there's a lot in this uh, route it takes about four to five days we're going to go through each section of it so I'd recommend you know making yourself now a cup of tea or coffee or grabbing a beer or something and sitting down and uh, and I'll go through the entire route in much more detail and um, this is obviously for people who, mainly for people who've never done the route before if you're coming from abroad from whether it's from the UK or the US or Canada or or somebody somewhere in mainland Europe uh, even if you've done the trip before you might find something new in it and um, I know uh, even though I do this trip every year every year I still find something new within the route and I, and I add it into the overall library and catalogue uh, so every year I do it I don't get to do all of the points but I try and mix it up each each time I go uh, but this will certainly go through all the main highlights of the the route uh, uh, and as I said it doesn't just focus on the 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 ring of Kerry itself um, as I mentioned in the overview it will look at some of the stuff off piece you know and it's very important uh, that you don't stick to just the uh, the main wild Atlantic way route when you're doing uh, this particular uh, drive because if you do that you're going to miss some of the best parts of not just the Ring of Kerry and, and the Southern Peninsulas but some of the best parts of, of Ireland um, if you were to just stick to the Wild Atlantic Way and just as I mentioned before on the, the overview video I'll just quickly recap on them again some of the things for example you would miss on the Ring of Kerry would be for example the, the Gap of Dunlow one of Ireland's premier um, uh, sites to go and see uh, you would totally miss that if you were to follow just the basic wild atlantic route uh, another item then is the ladies view it's, a, it's a, a lookout point that goes that allows you to look over the entire lakes of the Killarney National Park um, another one then would be the Balabima Gap uh, it's a stunning pass uh, right through the, the centre of the um, peninsula and then lastly would be the Bala Hashim Pass. It's another uh, beautiful pass through a valley. Um, so you would miss all of these and they're just a few things that we'll go through in, in this overview video. Uh, so with that, we'll, we'll crack on into the route itself, okay? So just looking at the route overall in its entirety uh, for the few days that I'm down there, I normally do this over, you know, depending, you know, on uh, how much time I have, uh, between four to five days. Um, so the way I, I, I do it is I take one full day to commute all the way down. So I live in Kildare, so I'll take a full day and I'll make a day trip of it all the way down here 
uh, and then get onto the coast. So I, I burn up as much distance as I can to get down to here and then I take more time on the coast itself when you start to get into, you know, from Kinsale onwards and you're onto the wild Atlantic way itself. Uh, and then I'll finish at the end of that day in Bantry and then that tees me up nicely to do uh, a day on each of the, the three peninsulas. What I always try to do before I get into Bantry is get Sheep's Head Peninsula here done before I get into uh, Bantry because that takes about an hour so at least you know it's done and dusted before you start the rest of the trip going forward uh, and then when you get up the next day you can get straight into the Barra Peninsula and onto the rest. So the end of the first day of commuting I, I finish in Bantry uh, the next day I'll get up and I'll do uh, the Barra Peninsula here uh, and then I'll finish in Clarny and then the next day I'll get up and I'll do the Ring of Kerry and then I'll generally finish in Clarny again uh, and then the next morning I'll get up and I'll cut over here and then do the Dingle Peninsula finishing in Dingle and then on the last day I commute home but I commute via the Burren uh, up along the Wild Atlantic Way taking in uh, the west coast right up to here uh, and then as you can see then that will then leave the other two sections that I spoke about previously left to do in different trips so it effectively takes in uh, the Haven coast or uh, the uh, West Cork all of the southern peninsulas uh, and then the, 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 the coast up along here before cutting out and getting back home to, uh, to Kildare um, so it's it's a nice it's a nice weekend trip to do. I mean, you could do it you know quicker if you wanted. You could just cut out all of this and go straight to Bantry, uh, but it's a long out trip down. And to be honest, I think it's better to make a day of it. Obviously, it'll be different for you if you wanted to do this trip. You could be coming from anywhere in the country, or you may already be down on the peninsulas. Um, or if you're coming in, if you're flying in from somewhere, you will generally fly into Dublin, uh, pick up a bike rental, and then make your way down or you could fly into uh, Shannon down here uh, and, and make your way and do it in reverse if you needed to. Uh, but that's basically the route that I would generally do each year. Uh, so let's get into each of the sections. I won't spend a huge amount of time on my commuting trip because it's not effectively, uh, you know, the vast majority of it isn't part of the Wild Atlantic Way, but there are some nice points along my route down that I'd just like to go over with you. Um, so that you can see what it's like if you, if you wanted to include them in your trip if you are coming from, from Dublin. But uh, I won't spend too much time of it, I'll spend most of my time on the peninsulas themselves. So let's, let's get into it. So this is my commuting uh, journey that I've got planned for this year. I, I change this pretty much every year. Um, but I start in Kildare and I just burn up as much distance as I can uh, to get down here to the coast because uh, otherwise it would take you uh, the whole day like I mean already you can see it's 362 miles it calculates it or estimates it out to be about a 10 hour day and that's not even including stops uh, so I try and burn up as much mileage as I can so I can spend as much time down in this section uh, as possible but just a few things, uh, most of these blue waypoints are just waypoints to keep me along a, a route that I want to take. I'll just go through some of the highlights, which are the waypoints that I've, I've highlighted here in, in orange. So the first one is uh, the V, and the V is a beautiful, uh, you know, not just a clever name, it's a, it's a, a road that makes a V shape here, and it goes through these mountains here before dropping you down uh, further south through Lismore, and again, beautiful castle in Lismore called Lismore Castle absolutely stunning uh, should definitely try and pass that if you can then I cut down all the way here uh, there's Middleton here the Middleton distillery is, is here if anyone wanted to pop in there Middleton is a very uh, rare uh, high-end Irish whiskey um, and this is where it's uh, it's it's made down in Middleton and Cork and then from then on we will cut out here and we take in this little uh, this little section here which is this effectively cove so you'll come out here by Foda Island and then we'll take the coast road this is a beautiful coast road all the way out and then it brings you through Cove town itself and um, a really beautiful um, historic town here within Ireland actually Cove is is the harbour from where the Titanic uh, was uh, sailed from before it's uh, 
it's unfortunate sinking uh, but this was the last place it docked before that sinking it left here and picked up some um, uh, passengers from from Cove Harbour and even to this day there, there's a museum down there dedicated to, uh, to to the Titanic and it's still used as a port for a lot of, uh, of the large um, cruise ships uh, from then on out we'll cut over and we're going to take the ferry now I know the route is showing here it's going on land but for some reason the map won't take the ferry crossing uh, but this is a basically a small little ferry uh, that goes across and brings you on to the, to the coast road here and you follow that coast road out and we'll keep continuing uh, south and then here I've just put in a little point here for Charles Fort it's a beautiful uh, uh, fort here in Ireland uh, I've got it in on this uh, this trip because I want to see if I can get my drone up over it and get some nice footage and then from there on we go into to, to the small town of Kinsale now you're effectively from here on in on to the wild Atlantic way uh, and Kinsale is a beautiful little town I mean a really really beautiful little town from Kinsale we'll uh, head on out to the old head of Kinsale where there's a golf club beautiful uh, lighthouse out here and again it's a, it's a beautiful little drive out before bringing us back out towards Balance Spittle onto the main road and then we'll continue on out along the coast uh, before heading out here then to uh, we're near Clonakilty here and uh, the reason I've got these highlighted here is if you didn't deviate here you would continue out through the main road but there's an absolutely phenomenal little um, coast road here that's totally unmissable you definitely need to include this uh, it brings you out by Inchidoni Island and Inchidoni uh, Island Hotel if I just go to street level here hopefully I'll find a nice part of it just to give you an idea of what it's like so as you can see it follows uh, the, the, the coast along here it's just a really pleasant uh, drive uh, so these these uh, points are keeping us honest along that that will continue on out along the coast and it, it's very slow road that's why this has taken so long 10 hours uh, without the uh, without the stops uh, so you can keep going out I've just put in another little point here it's the drum bag stone circle it's an ancient old burial site uh, if you've never done it before it's well worth going to stop in just purely from a, a historical point of view uh, and then we'll continue on out and then we start to get down onto the peninsulas themselves uh, so on this peninsula here we're going to cut right out because we're going to be short for time now and we're going to go down to Ireland's most southerly point and it's called Mizenhead and, uh, or Mizenhead depending on how you want to pronounce it um, and that's uh, it's a beautiful um, lighthouse out there um, the coastline is absolutely stunning and on your way out to it you'll pass a beautiful beach here called Barley Cove uh, if I can just go to street level here hopefully I can get a, a good view out of it uh, I'll just click here and so you'll see you'll come down this beautiful road and there's Barley Cove there in the distance and so what you'll do is you'll, you'll drive out here and on out along here there's the road up there and it continues out to the end of this little peninsula here which is Ireland's most southerly point uh, Mizzenhead Lighthouse really really beautiful uh, again I'm going to try and get the drone up over here it can be difficult uh, but I'll, I'll give it a shot because uh, there's often an awful lot of people here so I'll just go street view so you can see what to expect when you can get down here so lots of cliffs there is a lighthouse there but for some reason I haven't clicked on it but a really beautiful uh, spot to get there. and there's a little coffee shop and toilets and all in there if you need to use them or stop for a coffee uh, then I've got the points these are just these blue waypoints are just to keep me honest along uh, the coast road here absolutely beautiful coastline and then we'll drop out here onto Sheepshead Peninsula and here in Sheepshead Peninsula again well worth getting down here and try and get it done before you get into your hotel in Bantry that evening because you know it takes about you know an hour to, to get all of this done so you know the next day is going to be a long day you want to get this done and dusted so that you have more time onto the uh, the Berda Peninsula again I'll just go to the street level so you can see what's down here on uh, the sheep's head and again I want to try and get uh, some drone footage of this I'm sure this, uh, the Google car didn't get the great weather that day 
Um, but it's a it's a beautiful point to get down to. And again, there's another little coffee shop there if you wanted to stop. Uh, and then when we're finished with Sheep's Head, and this this road is as you saw there in the picture, it's it's a twin track and it gets very very uh, bumpy and it's almost like a roller coaster in parts. It goes up and down and you know it's all over the shop. It's it's it can be quite dodgy. Uh, in fact, it's one of the places I dropped my my old GS. Uh, I you know I couldn't get my foot down quick enough on a on a bad piece of road, and <laughs> myself and the bike ended up in a ditch. So uh, a bit of fun. So just be careful when you're out there on the old Sheep's Head Peninsula. So we're going to come in and then. As I said, the end of day one, which is basically commuting down, will finish in Bantry. And Bantry is absolutely stunning uh, little town. Um, I usually stay in a hotel there called the Maritime in Bantry, and it's absolutely spot on. I always try and book a room with a, with a view out over Bantry Bay, uh, the famous Bantry Bay, and uh, you can't go wrong. Absolutely stunning. So if you get that day done, that's a big, big, long day, uh, but it's a great day. Great days driving. So that's the commute down. So now we're going to get into the, the peninsulas themselves. So getting up in the morning uh, and leaving Bantry, the Maritime Hotel then, uh, before we go down onto the peninsula itself, we're going to go up and do a road just up here. Uh, and it's called the uh, Kilgarvan to Balaliki Road uh, because it runs basically from Kilgarvan to Balaliki. But it's an amazing road that goes up through this valley and a set of mountains. It's full of corners and uh, uh, amazing vistas. If I can just try and get a good spot here see if you can see what's going on so you can see it's way up in the mountains a narrow little track it does turn into boring and twin track with a lot of gravel on it you know there's an awful lot of sheep uh, so be careful on it particularly if it's if it's raining but it's an absolute stunning drive now the one thing I would say about this drive is I favor this over another famous route and um, there's a road alongside it here basically this road here and this is called the uh, the priest sleep uh, now a lot of people I've, I've done the priest sleep a few times uh, but to be honest with you I, I kind of avoid it now I've done it a, a good few times uh, the priest sleep is absolutely stunning very steep it's a boring with twin track an awful lot of sheeps on it if it's dry by all means do it uh, but it'll be a shorter run it is slightly more spectacular but if it's in any way wet the road becomes unbelievably treacherous. It's full of muck and sheep dung and uh, it's it's slanted off with a very steep drop to one side. It's uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It's it's everything I expected the Apple Cross to be in Scotland but ended up not being. But it, it can be a bit of a hairy road uh, if the weather is bad on it. By all means go up if it's, um, if it's a dry day. Uh, there's a section of it there that doesn't look too bad. And trust me, I know it doesn't look too bad here, but when you're driving it in the rain, uh, it gets very, very sloppy and can be very, very precarious. But it is absolutely a stunning road. As you can see, we're right here at the top of it. Um, so only do this if you're feeling confident or if it's a dry day. But to be honest with you, I think this is a better drive along here on the, ba the Kilgarvan to Ballylicky Road. You won't be disappointed with it. Uh, that drops you out here by Kilgarvan. And then we're going to come back in along this road, uh, following by point five, which is the Caja Pass. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, shop here, a little uh, arts and craft shop called um, Molly Gallivan's. There's a little tea shop and everything in it. Uh, but this Caja Pass is an absolutely stunning drive. Uh, let me see if I can just click in, get you an idea. Uh, so there's Molly Gall Gallivan's there beautiful big uh, old statue but uh, it's a phenomenal drive you can get a good bit of speed up the sports bike riders amongst you will love it a uh, really good road uh, that then brings us on here now again there's a there's a slight deviation here you can continue on the n71 here and it'll eventually bring you in to kill to sorry to glengara and that's an incredible drive but what i would recommend again if you're feeling you know confident and you're on an adventure bike is to get up here to Barley Lake 
uh, it's an absolutely stunning uh, drive but the problem again very similar to the Priestley the road gets extremely bad uh, particularly in bad weather uh, let me just uh, zoom in you can see it's heavy twin track and when it's wet it's very slippy so you just need to be uh, quite aware of it and these corners are quite tight and they're de deceptively steep as well this uh, this picture isn't doing it justice but it's well worth the effort to get up to the particularly if you've never been to Barley Cove before or Barley Lake it's absolutely stunning uh, but don't feel you've missed out on anything if you skip it and you continue on down through the N71 and down into Glengareth and again Glengareth absolutely stunning little uh, village very famous for the uh, the the flora and fauna around it uh, this part of the country is is on one of the uh, tropics so all of the uh, plant life down there is far more different to anything uh, in the rest of Ireland it's it's really beautiful you'll continue on down here along the coast uh, we'll pass seven which is just the waypoint and then you're heading into uh, one of the uh, one of the really iconic roads down in the, uh, the, the southern peninsulas and that's the Healy Pass. Uh, you, if you've been following the, the uh, channel you'll have seen uh, aerial footage of the Healy Pass. It's an absolutely stunning road. I mean it's possibly one of the most beautiful roads in all of Ireland and it's great fun to drive. Uh, leaving the, uh, the Healy Pass we'll drop down here. Point nine is just a, a waypoint and then we'll continue on down here on the west coast now of the peninsula uh, and then we'll drop out here to Glen Beg Lock and this is a dead end but again it's it's just one of these little roads that's uh, nice to drive down if you want to get some nice uh, photographs or aerial footage uh, I'll just click on it here and you can see beautiful lake here in the valley again it's a small little track but well worth the effort to get down to it just be careful on the old gravel uh, you'll come back out of here and then we'll continue on down southwards and then we'll cut back across over onto the kind of southeastern coast of the uh, the peninsula down by Castletown Bear and again this is a beautiful drive down along the coast before we get here to point number 12 which is just keeping us along the coast road and then from here on it's a absolutely astonishing drive all the way down here to point number 13 which is the Dursey Island cable car and that's Ireland's only uh, cable car and that what that does is that cable car is just a way for farmers etc to get their sheep and uh, etc over to Dursey Island itself uh, but it's an absolutely stunning drive great point particularly for for footage there it is there so you can see these two towers here have cables across them and then the cable car runs across these cables uh, to the point I believe there's the cable car itself it's just a little wooden box basically. I believe there's an old aeroplane uh, World War II wreckage on the far side of the peninsula. I've never seen it. It's probably gone or submerged. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a beautiful spot to get down to. Uh, but obviously this is a dead end. So you're going to have to come up off of this and then we're going to follow the road now back but up along the, the upper north uh, west coast uh, side of the peninsula and we're going to follow the Alahis to Erie's uh, road so this is along here so there's Erie's there's Alahis and we're going to take this coast road out and all the way up here and we're heading back up north now and you can see by the squiggle uh, of the road it's very twisty and turny it, it, the coastline is absolutely stunning all along here this this road is just not only beautiful but it is absolutely great fun to drive uh, so you know it's something definitely to look forward to and um, after we get past uh, Erie's we're going to go out here then to uh, this is called the um, the ring of Barra. this just this whole section here is like a little peninsula off the peninsula and um, but again this is a stunning coastal drive it's going to bring you right out along the Ring of Berra. The Ring of Berra is, is a drive within itself uh, but on the peninsula I'll just click on it here so as you can see it goes all the way along the coast with these beautiful mountains and lakes along the side of it it's it's unmissable. Uh, the one thing I would say is that every year I go down the local councils road dress it with gravel so it it's often covered in deep deep gravel uh, when you, whenever you go down there. 
So point 18 will keep us along by our groom, then we're gonna continue back out. We're kind of overlapping ourselves a little bit to where we came off the Healy Pass. And then we're gonna go out onto the coast here, uh, out by Tragley, and continue on up along the coast here. And again, this is a stunning drive. And then we're gonna cut out through the beautiful town of Kenmare, and we're gonna head up to Malls Gap. And we're basically onto the ring of Kerry here. So we're at the, we've moved now from the Berla Peninsula onto the ring of Kerry. And again, this road is absolutely amazing. Malls Gap is a beautiful stopping point. There's a, a, a beautiful Avoca hand weavers cafe and, and craft shop there. Uh, it's a good point to pull in if you need a coffee or a toilet break. Um, but uh, it's, it's one of Ireland's, uh, again, iconic viewing points. And then you're going to move down along this road here and take in Ladies View. And Ladies View, again, is another stunning point that overlooks uh, the entire Clarny National Park. And then from Ladies View, we're gonna make our way down through here. Uh, and this road is absolutely astonishing. It just twists and turns and twists and turns with the beautiful park to your, to your left-hand side. Uh, I can't help but giggle as I'm driving down this road. It's just one of the best roads in the country to drive, really, really good fun. Uh, if you want you can stop here for Torque Waterfall, it's a beautiful waterfall, there's a little car park here at the side and it's only like a five minute walk up to the waterfall, uh, well worth the effort to get up. Uh, if you've done it before, probably not worth stopping, um, but uh, definitely something to, to go and see if you've never seen it before. And then that brings us in around uh, the lakes up past Muckras uh, and into uh, Clarny itself. So you know, wherever you're staying in Clarny, Clarny is a, an amazing town full of music and uh, uh, shops and everything you know it's 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 just a great place to, to, to base yourself for the evening uh, plenty of entertainment uh, you won't you won't be bored when you get in there uh, a lot of people think it's become a little bit too commercialized uh, and I'd probably agree with that but it's still enjoyable uh, as an alternative to Clarny you can stay in Kenmare Kenmare is just as beautiful and not quite as commercialized uh, but it's totally up to yourself. I generally would stay in Clarny because it tees you up nicely then for the next day. So we'll 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 uh, we'll have a look at the next day now. Go on and and dig deeper into the Ring of Kerry itself. <laughs> 